Hey guys, Constance here at Good Life Farm. So this is still a Good Life Farm and I will still probably continue to address it that way. However, I did simplify the channel name because I've had a lot of people give me feedback that it was too long, it was hard to get off the tongue, and so I just reverted it to the original Cosmopolitan Cornbread, but this will always be a Good Life Farm. So I have been sitting here working on addressing cards for the card swap, and they will be going out in the mail tomorrow, but there's something else that's gonna be going out in the mail tomorrow. I just got a package in the mail from Chattanooga, which is where a certain Two Ridges Pottery is located, and I got the coffee mugs, yay! So all of you who ordered coffee mugs from me will be getting them in the mail very, very soon. They will be going out tomorrow. So I'm about to unpack all of these from the big box that came from Tori, and I will start packaging them up in the individual boxes to send them off to all of you who ordered mugs. Oh my heavens. Really? <laughs> three broody silkies. All three of our silkies are currently broody. And chances are, they probably don't even have any eggs under them. One with no eggs. <laughs> There's two with no eggs. How about you? You're gonna make it three for three? Mm -hmm. Come here. Oh, she's got one. Mm -hmm. One. One little bantam egg. So I'm out here doing the afternoon chores, which includes gathering up the few eggs that we are getting this time of year, as well as, let's try to move you out of the sun there, as well as watering. Normally, well, most of the year, I do all of the watering in the morning, cleaning out the water pans and all of that. But right now we're getting down super, super cold at night and everything's frozen. And quite frankly, we don't empty out the hoses every night. That's just, you know, a lot of work. And so what I do when we are getting freezing temperatures is I just do the water in the afternoon or early evening. That way they're still getting fresh water every day. The pans are still getting cleaned out every single day and I don't have to deal with um, frozen water hoses because by the afternoon everything is thawed out and, and good to go. So I just have to hook up the hose and do, do my thing. Um, now I do still have to break ice in the mornings and as long as it didn't get too cold and as long as we just have a thin layer of ice on top of the water pans then we're good. Now if something freezes solid then of course I've got to break it out and in those situations then I'm gonna to have to fill buckets of water 
and I'm gonna have to haul water out here for everybody. But in the situation where it's just a layer of ice on top, I will just kick the pan, break the ice, and we're good to go. That's one of the reasons I like using those black rubber pans because when things freeze, you just break it and it's fine. It never harms those pans. Whereas if you used metal ones or something like that, it's gonna be damaged by doing that. So those black rubber ones are super, super durable and uh, they put up with a lot of abuse. Well, this is a sad situation. Two full-size eggs, one bantam egg. We are definitely putting the bantam eggs to use this time of year. So with winter being in full swing, we just don't get very many eggs. And I know that technically, well, actually, is it today or tomorrow? The first day of winter is just about here. Oh, that is good. That means the sun will start coming back soon. Oh. And that means I need to start thinking about my seeds. <laughs> Oh, one thing is for sure that when one garden season ends the next one is just around the corner and I've already got a couple of new things I'm thinking about trying in next year's garden I haven't I haven't solidified it as far as what new things I want to try but there are a couple that I'm leaning towards and I will do a video all about the seeds and my plans for next year's garden um, another day uh, but yeah I'm, I'm starting to make the list <laughs> I cannot wait oh, I say that but I know there's going to be so much work to do be between now and the next garden coming in and I've already resigned myself to the fact that the greenhouse will not get built this year the, the full-size greenhouse However, on Sunday when I had my live chat, the topic came up and it dawned on me, I don't have to build my full on wood structure greenhouse this year. Um, what I can do is, and I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, I can build a cattle panel one. You know, just like we have the cattle panel structure for the young chickens when we move them out there, um, we've had rabbits in them. We've used them as a rabbit colony. Currently we have one set up that we store straw in. I don't really have the room to store straw bales in our little barn slash shed that looks like a barn. And so that is where we keep it. Keeps it dry, keeps it up off the ground and all that because we have pallets set up in there. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. I mean, I have the instructions on my blog for the cattle panel structure and it even says use it as a greenhouse and it would only take a very short time to set up so this year I will have a greenhouse it just won't be my permanent greenhouse um, I will probably do some cold frames again um, it just depends on how much space I need last year or this past year back in the early spring I did some cold frames they took like five minutes to put together they were straw bales and old windows and that was just about it super easy and it worked very well I was able to grow gosh I don't even know how many plants in there I had to have had at least 200 plants all the tomatoes all the peppers you know all sorts of things and so there was plenty of room and it cost next to nothing to do that so that's an easy option that just about anybody could do um, but yes the cattle panel greenhouse will be in the works here before too long I had thought about doing it this week but then the weather has just been nasty and wet and cold and 
it takes such a short time to put that thing together um, that there's really no rush to do it. So speaking of the garden, I did a little walk through here a little bit ago after I watered all of the animals and we are going to be harvesting some cabbage here pretty soon. Now the purple cabbage isn't anywhere near ready. It doesn't have any heads formed or anything like that. It's they're beginning to form. They're they're starting to get that shape there in the center. But we have got at least four heads of green cabbage that are about ready to harvest. We've got two heads of traditional green cabbage and then I saw two good-sized savoy cabbage heads which is that kind of tender crinkly cabbage that was a little bit more delicate and so I've had to keep that covered up out there in uh, the big garden to protect it from the weather and everything so uh, yes I will be cooking up some cabbage here before too long and I think I will take at least one of the heads of cabbage and do a little batch of homemade sauerkraut and then the last thing that I just wanted to say was a great big thank you. Thank you to all of you who gave me such wonderful feedback about my new blog that I just launched. I was really excited to see how well received it was and all of the comments and messages that I have gotten about it. I, I really appreciate it. Now it is a brand new blog and so it's it's just getting started but it does have a nice collection of recipes already there's several new recipes going up every single week i've got several weeks of recipes planned already and so at wholesome skillet you can find all sorts of very healthy real food kinds of recipes that is it i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video for today thank you for joining me here at a good life farm my name is constance and I will talk to y'all next time.